first last night. Troy Davis was scheduled to be killed at 7 p.m. in Georgia. Uh, there was an attempt by his lawyers to get a stay of execution from the Supreme Court of the United States. They took a couple hours and then said, nah, just kill him. Uh, so he was killed by lethal injection. We had reports from uh, reporters who were there as, um, I guess, sort of pool reporters. He looked at the family of the uh, off-duty uh, police and uh, reiterated he had no uh, responsibility whatsoever for killing their father, husband, son, whatever the case was for those uh, family members. Uh, he said to those people who were involved in killing him, may God have mercy on your souls. And then he was injected with a drug that kills animals, that euthanizes, uh, euthanizes I get animals. And look, I, I don't know if uh, Troy Davis was guilty or not guilty. But it's quite clear that there was a lot of doubt as to his guilt. But for me, his uh, guilt, or lack thereof, was secondary. There's absolutely no data that supports that state, the state killing people in any way prevents other people from killing other people. It obviously costs states uh, a lot more money to sentence someone to death uh, because they're due, uh, due process. Um, Troy Davis was on death row for 20-some-odd years. It also, I think, uh, probably destroys the lives of those people who have to kill these people, for the most part. I think if you are anything but a psychopath, the idea that you can just go to work and, eh, we killed somebody today. Yeah, I was, I was in charge of injecting him. Uh, and that's not going to haunt you for the rest of your life, I think, is, uh, I think you're deluding yourself. But it's, it's, the, it's quite the case that uh, a lot of these people who are involved in uh, killing other people, even uh, with the state sanction. Um, suffer tremendously from it. Well, there are others who are psychopaths, so I'm sure, just like, hey, let me do it. Uh, but society gets no benefit out of it. It is incredibly barbaric. And, um, you know, the only good thing that can come out of something like this is the, the hope that uh, perhaps there's some impetus to deal with... Uh, with the barbarism that is involved in this. You know, there seemed to be uh, potentially a movement in this way back in 2000. Then, of course, 9-11 changed everything. We got, uh, as Americans, much more in tune with what was going around in the world. International news skyrocketed for us. Uh, irony was dead. We all became far more serious. There was no more playing games. We rallied around as a country. And, of course, um, the only uh, side effect was that we no longer paid attention to the, uh, things like uh, the death penalty. Maybe, maybe now that we're out of the, um, the shadow of 9-11, uh, maybe we can start uh, getting back to trying to uh, make our society more civilized. I doubt it. But understand that if you support the death penalty, you necessarily support the death of innocent people. There's just, I'm sorry, there's just, there's no way we can have the death penalty and convince ourselves that innocent people are not put to death by the state. Yeah, maybe we can cut down on the odds. But if you support the death penalty, understand that inevitably and invariably, innocent people will be killed. Or I should say, not guilty people will be killed by your tax dollars. Any more so than you can say, uh, we can have war without civilians dying. It's just they're part and parcel. They're wrapped up. That's the price you pay. So uh, that's the, uh, the death penalty.